one of my recent videos, that was the napkin ring problem video, I very briefly touched on one of Inventor's inspection tools, it was this one here, the cross section analysis tool, very briefly touched on it, it's where you splice through multiple areas of your model and it shows you things like surface area and wall thicknesses, that kind of thing, and it got me thinking, there's a whole bunch of analysis tools here in Inventor which I've never touched on on the channel, but they're really useful when the time comes to need them. And the one that I've used more than any other in the past is the Zebra Analysis Tool, and it's just nice. It's just nice to know that it's there when you need it. I can't promise that you can just go to your desk and just use it immediately. It's one of those things that you just need to know it's there, and then you can call on it when the time comes and you think, I know I can do this. So, some of you may have turned it on in the past, and I say that because it's dead easy to turn on. It's literally just click and then click. Your model goes all stripey, and you may have looked at it and went, right, okay, I've turned it on, it's gone all Lucy in the Sky with Diamond's Eye and the Walrus Cuckoo could chew on me, but I've no idea what it is that I'm looking at. The models went stripey, all trippy, but I don't, don't understand what's going on here. I don't know why it's stripey, I don't know why the stripes are moving. I'll just undo that and then move on with my life. So you may have done that and not really understood what it was that you were looking at, but there could be a use for this. So the whole point of the Zebra Analysis Tool has got one job and one job only, and that is to place stripes on your model which show any surface breakages between faces or joints in your model, or in your part, specifically your part. And then that's it, that's all it does. So you click it, you click the Zebra Analysis button, and then you get a whole bunch of settings. You can name the analysis if you want to be really anal about it. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can, you can. I suppose people would complain if they, if they didn't let you name it. Uh, but I've never, <laughs> I've never given it a name. And then you just click OK, and then it drops some stripes on your model. Now, inspecting these stripes will highlight problems with the faces on your model. When you've got one continuous face, say on a single molded body, on a single feature, a prime example would be this lower half of this hack your face up with a blade razor thingy. This is all one feature, it's all one molded part, so the lines on that particular area of the model, you can see they're pretty straight. They're pretty straight. You've got this black zebra line here, it's running all the way down the body, it's contoured. This is actually curved, that's why the black line isn't a complete, as the, crow, as the crow flies, straight as a dart line. But when it gets to this joint here, it might not have been easy to notice by eye, just by looking at the model, but this joint here between that loft and that loft is a breakage in the continuity between the two lofts. So when we turn the zebra analysis back on, you can see the lines as they meet at this face. And we're back, right, so the lines as they meet at this joint, you can see they do not line up. There is a clear breakage between the two faces, and that's highlighted by the fact that the lines don't flow from one face to another. So that's the whole point of the zebra analysis tool. That's what you're looking at right now is a textbook example of what the zebra analysis tool is is useful to highlight these areas so that you can then find them and go and fix them. So within the analysis tool, you've got a whole bunch of settings. If you give right click on the analysis tool in the browser, it, it puts a little folder, a new folder up at the top when you create an analysis called analysis. And you can expand that. Right click on your analysis and then hit edit. And then in there, you can change all the settings. Why you'd want to, you'd have to be really hardcore needing to use this analysis tool to really be all that bothered about changing the settings, but you can. The display quality, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo what this does. At the moment, it's said best quality ever, max, max, best quality 2017. If you drop this down to zero, it literally doesn't change. I have no idea what that does, but apparently nothing. Then you've got things like uh, the opacity, that's on 100%. If you drag that down, then again, <laughs> It just doesn't look like it does anything. I'm sure it does on in some very special use cases, which I'm saying that like and like I know I just I just I just, I just can't be bothered to, to explain it. I actually don't know when that would make a difference. Uh, but whatever, right? And then you've got things like density and thickness, which these these two are the main sliders that you want to use. The thickness is the thickness of the lines. As you crank that down, you can see the lines uh, become. Well, the, when it, when it's referring to the thickness, it's it's referring to the white line. The black line gets thicker. The white line. Uh, is getting thinner. As you crank that all the way up at the top, you see the white line's now thicker, the black line's uh, smaller. And then the same goes for density. You can crank the density up, and then you just get more lines. And then that might help you find the more lines you've got, the, may the more chance you might have of finding breakages on your models. I don't know. I don't know, but that's what it's all about. That's what the Zebra tool is all about. So to fix this particular problem, uh, the, the problem with this joint is this loft here. Uh, that loft is that face, you can see it's a weird kind of egg-shaped sketch, and it's lofted 
all the way down to a point. So if I double click this loft and go to the conditions and I can change the first face to be a smooth G2. So it's, it comes out from here in a smooth G2 transition and then that should fix all the zebra lines. Now they're never going to be perfect because it is never going to be a picture perfect smooth as a baby's bum transition out from the, the first face. It's never going to be that but it's a lot better than it was. As you move the camera around you can see the lines do sort of flow together a lot better than they did uh, using that G2 smooth transition out from the second loft. So this is where that zebra quality and the, the thickness and the density might just need to be tweaked a little bit. Don't need it to be so dense so it can maybe uh, put that up to about there. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit better. So yeah, you can see the lines there. They do smooth. Uh, they do flow a lot better out between the two surfaces now. So that's pretty much it. To turn the analysis off without deleting it, you can right click on the <laughs> you can right click on the analysis folder and then tick that, and I'll turn it off and then turn it back on. Uh, another thing you can do as well, if I just delete this analysis because I'm done with it, you can just enable the analysis on specific surfaces if you want to. So if you want to inspect the flow between, say, that face, hold down control, that face and that face, you can multi-select those faces, turn on Zebra, and then it'll just turn on for those faces. If you're finding that it's just not working, though, because the lines are just going in a completely different direction, well, you can then go back into the settings of the Zebra Analysis tool and you can change the direction of the lines by using that button there and then that will give you a better idea. Uh, it ch just changes the directions of the line based on the orientation of the faces. So if you're thinking, well, why aren't these ones all consistent? Well, the fillet that I've got between these two faces isn't a smooth fillet, it's just a tangent fillet, so it's never going to be perfect. Uh, that's again something you can experiment with. You can change your fillets to G2 fillets rather than tangent fillets and then see how the lines transition between faces and such like. Alright, that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you very much. I just want to say and wrap up this video with a massive thank you to everybody who's uh, supported me on Patreon so far. There's not been a lot of you guys, but those that have, have my immense gratitude. It's meant a massive amount. And also, thank you massively to everybody who's signed up for the Plural Site free trial. I've, I don't like talking about this kind of thing, but for every one person that signs up for just a free trial on Plural Site, that gives me a kickback. One person gives me a bigger kickback via Plural Site than I get from 20% of my entire ad revenue for an entire month on YouTube. That's right, one person signing up for a free trial gets me more cash than 20% of my entire ad revenue every month on YouTube. So thank you so much to everybody that's done that so far. Anybody that's interested in going on over to Plural Site and getting that free free trial, it's not just me that's over there. There is a huge arsenal of training courses over on Plural Site, very well laid out by some very, very well-educated guys and girls over on Plural Site. Link is in the description down below if you want to go and sign up for a free trial. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.